Hey, Coach, what is it about going down to Stillwater um, that makes it so difficult? I mean, even when they, they kind of have off years, it's, it's been a tough place for you guys. I think, you know, I, I looked it up. I think our record in, in Gallagher, Iba, since we've been here is six and seven. I had Chris look that up, uh, uh, I think, a couple of days ago. And, you know, I think most of the time, if you're 50-50 on the road, you probably think that's okay. Uh, but in this situation, I think we've had the hardest time winning, Chris, if I'm not mistaken, in Stillwater more so than any other place in the league. Is that right? Yeah, West Virginia, maybe. So, 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 so uh, I think we're about 500 there. So, yeah, it, it, it's been hard for us. I, 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 you know, maybe some of it's my fault uh, early on, especially maybe uh, putting too much pressure on the guys that I really wanted to win there. I don't know. But, but uh, uh, I think that they get pretty amped up to play against us. And, and uh, you know, they've had some really good players and they've had some good teams. And so, uh, we know going down there today, we're going to be playing against a team that's, you know, if you look at their three losses, I mean, two of them on the last possession, the other one in overtime. I mean, if I'm not mistaken. So, so that, that they could very easily be, you know, 10 and one or 11 and 0. And, and they, they have, you know, arguably, you know, the best prospect in the country without question. So, so uh, uh, they've got, they got a, they've got a nice team. Mike's done a great job and he's well liked by everybody down there and, and uh, they play hard for him much time recruiting Kate? did we spend much time yeah uh i wouldn't say a ton of time after, after uh, uh 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 you know we, we 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 talked to Cade. uh certainly jarence was involved with Cade, but but after his brother was hired at oklahoma state you know that that uh uh i don't think that although i know other schools were in there till the end we we, we weren't one of the ones at the finish line though uh uh we felt like we could probably put our time and energy energy into uh into others that that maybe uh had a better shot at getting uh but but uh he's he's certainly worthy of all the accolades has been thrown his way so far what stands out about him what, what makes him uh, I, I think what I, I like about him the most is he's a player he's just a basketball player he's he can play one through four maybe five he uh he rebounds his position he's got size he's got unbelievable vision uh he can score at all three levels uh and he's got great pace and, and, and he's, the game's in slow motion to him, uh, which is very, very difficult for most young kids to feel like. I think if you ask most freshmen, the game's in fast forward, and he's got it in slow motion. So I, I think that's a, a tribute to his IQ and his feel and, and uh, also his talent. I feel it's not uncommon for you to have great depth. Uh, this year you've got 10 guys that have uh, each at some point in time been major uh, – parts of, of, of games. Uh, just can you talk about, you know, having 10 guys and uh, does that help you? Because I know you like to kind of trim it down at yeah. the end of the season. Well, you, you know what, Dave? I, I think that uh, – I think we got good depth, but I don't think our bench has played anywhere close to like they're capable of playing. Uh, we've had we've had flashes, you know. When, when, when uh, we played at TCU, you know, you had uh, obviously uh, uh, Tristan and Mitch and, and – and, one who was a starter that game, but those guys came in and and you know all played terrific. Uh, but I don't think we, we we we've had very many games where you've had two or three guys on the bench uh, really produce in a way that would be comparable to the starters. I know against Oklahoma, uh, Mitch did, but uh, but other than that, I don't I didn't feel like anybody was a major major contributor to their talent level. So. I like the fact that we do have 10 guys that we can put in there. Uh, of course, and we haven't had Bryce since, since, uh, since Christmas, but I don't, I, I still think there's another gear we can get to, to, to perform better and to rest the starters more minutes. Uh, uh, you know, this, this is, this is probably on me more so than anybody else, but, but, but Christian Nochai don't, don't need to be playing 37 minutes a game. Uh, and Marcus 32, uh, uh, whatnot, uh, uh, and the only reason Jalen didn't play more on on Saturday was just probably because he had a rough first half. But uh, you know that, that that that's not really utilizing your bench in the way that I that that I had envisioned. Has Tristan taken advantage of this extended? I, 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 I I'm sorry, I can't hear. Can, can you turn it up, Connor? Is that possible? Is it all the way up? Okay, can you guys uh, speak up? 
Okay, I'll try again. Can you hear me? At now? my age. You got me now? I got you. I got you. Just with, with this extended opportunity that Tristan's gotten since Bryce has been out, have you seen him take any positive steps forward? Um, sure, sure. I thought he was terrific against TCU. Now, I didn't think he was as good the other day. Uh, you know, it, you know, every scout report is going to say it, but, you know, he gets, he gets backdoored too often, too, every game, twice in the same game against OU, and you give up easy baskets and you don't create them on the other end. That, 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 that's hard to overcome. So I, I do think that he's, he's still got another year he can get to. But I, do, I, I think he's made the most of the opportunity, and I think he's played well for the most part. I just think there's some plays that he makes that, that if, if you go back and watch Tate, you know, a mental – a mental screw up, I think, affects him in a way that that maybe could affect his aggressiveness moving forward, and, and we got to eliminate those. Hey, it seems like Mitch is starting to play uh, more consistent minutes lately. What's what's led to that? Well, we played big. You know, I don't know that we played small uh, one possession in the last two games. So, you know, if if, if we do that, then that means that David and Mitch are going to split time at the five. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And I think we're actually, uh, uh, you know, my, my personal opinion is I think Mitch has played well. I think David's last two games have played very well, but I think Mitch has played almost equally well in the minutes that he's had. And, you know, I, I just think that's been our best lineup to, to, to go that route. Coach, in talking to Marcus, uh, he was saying that Oklahoma State uh, has a tendency to play uh, five guards quite a bit. Do you anticipate matching them um, with the five-guard lineup as well? You know, even when they play bigs, the bigs are like guards uh, a lot of times. Uh, now, they will play a true five-guard some, and then Cade or likely can be kind of their player or their five-man or, or whatever in certain situations, and they post them. But I do think this is a game where – we need to be prepared to do that because when they do that, you get five shooters out there, and sometimes that's hard for our big guys to chase around. So we need to be prepared to do it. I'm not saying that's what we intend to do, but certainly uh, uh, it's something that, based on lineups, we may, we may need to. Hey, Bill, when Jalen and Christian get defensive rebounds, sometimes they've pushed it themselves and sometimes they've thrown it to Marcus. I just wondered what you want from them in, that, in those situations. Well, I actually think that uh, uh, Jalen's pretty good at bringing it on the bounce. Uh, I would say that he's probably the second best on our team other than Mark – or the third best, I say, behind Juan and, and, uh, and Marcus. Uh, I've been really disappointed in how we've run to score. I think we've done a lot of good things. I don't think we've, we've ran to score uh, like, uh, like we should. And, you know, if you got two guys waiting for the ball, that's a big reason why. But – uh, if if and, and Marcus hasn't been a great runner in transition when he's not bringing it, so those are some things we can improve on. But uh, I, I'm fine with Jalen getting it and bringing it. I, I actually think he's very good in transition. I I think one thing our team hasn't done very well is pitch ahead, and when we do that, we play a lot faster because obviously the ball will move faster than what we can dribble it, and uh, and we're not a we're not a terrific scoring team or passing team in transition. So. Pitching ahead, I think, is something that puts more pressure on the defense and will allow us to get more opportunities if we get a little better at that. Hey, you're at the top of the conference in block shots right now. Does it feel that way? I'm sorry, what, something about block shots? Yeah, you're at the, you're at the top of the conference right now. Does it, does it feel that way? That that's no, no, we're not, a good, we're not a great shot blocking team by any stretch. But, you know, Mitch gets his fair share for the minutes he plays. And, and, and uh, David hasn't gotten a ton, although he's been better in the league without question. But, you know, what we kind of got, we got some guys that can run guys down and, and block from behind or alter, you know, e even though, you know, they scored on it. CB had a great block in transition to eliminate an initial layup this past Saturday. So, you know, we're getting – we're getting what are we getting, about four a game? Uh, but we, and that leads the league. But, you know – I think that uh, there's been years where uh, for a game by a single player uh, uh, is, is, is a realistic uh, – I don't know how many Cole averaged uh, without question. I, I don't know uh, how many Joel averaged or, or, uh, or maybe Doak in their best years, but it doesn't feel like that we have a dominant shot blocker by any stretch. Bill, is Bryce getting close to playing? 
Yeah, he practiced yesterday, Gary. Uh, it was limited, but he did practice contact. So he may be available tomorrow. You know, he hadn't practiced since the 28th of December. So yesterday in a 15-minute contact situation, I don't know is enough time to, to give you an idea if he's, you know, rhythm and things like that ready to go. But I know he's trying to get back as soon as possible. And the doc said he'd start improving at a pretty rapid rate in about two weeks, and it's been right at two weeks. So we think he's day-to-day. Hey, Bill, a couple times here you've landed a, a number one prospect type of guy with Josh and Andrew. Uh, in, in a big picture sense, what can that mean to a program like Oklahoma State? Well, I think, you know, the biggest thing it does is I think that, that players want to go to places where uh, uh, there's a track record of putting guys in the league. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing for – Frank to spend four years here and be national player of the year and, and improve as you guys saw each and every year to the point where he could play in the NBA or Devonte in the same way. But there's people out there saying, well, if he's that good, why do you have to stay four years? Whereas, you know, the ones that are the ones like Cade, they're one and done regardless of where they went to school. Andrew is a one and done regardless if he came to Kansas or not. Uh, and there's other places out there to get those players. Now, do those places help develop them and prepare them for uh, 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 the NBA and style and all that stuff? Absolutely. But I, I think I think that uh, getting a player like Cade and him going high in the draft will encourage other top prospects to say, you know, I can go to Oklahoma State and this can happen to me. I think that's helped us in the past. And, of course, we haven't landed those type of prospects in the last, uh, last two or three years. But, but uh, well, there'll be a time where we do. And, and when that happens, that kind of opens the floodgates a little bit to others. How much of rebounding is skill and how much is will? Kanitra, I would say uh, rebounding is probably uh, – far more will than skill. Uh, I think that there is some technique that goes into it, that knowing how to wedge or knowing how to spin and get half the pie, uh, you know, things like that, knowing how to read uh, the ball when it leaves a hand, whether you think it's going to be short or long. You know, there's our guys that are very good at, the, good at that. But most of it is, is activity and – and always be moving and, and put yourself in a position where you it's a 50-50 ball every time that you're on offense. And if you do that, there'll be 50% of the balls that will bounce your way. Uh, uh, but but I, I do think the, the best rebounders are the ones that go after the ball. Hey, you mentioned the other day, Dave and Mitch only had one rebound between them. When you watched the tape, what did you see kind of contributing to that? Well, I mentioned it because that's what the stat sheet <laughs> obviously said. I, I, I think that uh, a lot of times they're more worried about blocking their man off and keeping their man from getting the ball and allowing somebody else to get it, uh, which in times is okay. Like let's, let's say, for instance, OU, if, if, if they send one to the glass, which there's many possessions where they sent one and we sent one to the glass. They send one to the glass and David blocks off the one guy going, then that frees up whoever to get the next rebound. You play West Virginia like that, you're going to get your butt handed to you because they all go. Uh, uh, so I, I, th I think hitting and going and getting and not relying on somebody else to get it, I think is something that we can improve on. What bothered me most, because defensive rebounding, we weren't awful the other day by any stretch, although they did score more points off second chances because they, they passed out and made a couple of threes. But, but – uh, but offensively rebounding, I thought we were bad. And, and that's because I didn't think we gave the second, third effort that you have to when a team attempts to block you off or to keep you out of the paint to rebound the ball. You have to give a second, third effort. And I didn't think we did that consistently at all. Hey, Marcus was just asked uh, where they're at defensively. And he said we're getting there. What, what's the next step for this group defensively? Uh. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Matt. I, maybe finishing possessions. Uh, you know, the, the 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 thing about it is uh, with 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 our team and you guys watch them and you study them like like we do. Uh, we don't get very many opportunities from our defense to score easy. For instance, OU scored in the first half three uncontested layups, basically, off of our offensive miscues. 
uh, when a when a when an opponent has an offensive miscue against us, uh, it seems like we're not we're not we're not converting on that, or we're not even stealing the ball. There were twice in the game against OU where they gave us the ball and we weren't prepared to take it uh, because we were slow reacting. That's the kind of stuff that our activity levels got to improve. And certainly positioning, I don't think we're awful positioning wise. Uh, I thought we did a better job on ball screens. I thought we played the scout and report better, but we didn't do anything to create havoc. And that's something that, that I think the next step with good teams do is, you know, they, 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 they keep the other team from getting a good look but they also take advantage when the other team screws up just by being at the right place and being active. And we're not doing that enough. Bill, with the schedule being slightly shorter, I know it's only a, a couple games difference than what it normally would be. Has that at all changed how you guys sort of manage workloads, whether it's in game or in practices throughout the week? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I will say this, we're not going long uh, today. We'll go an hour today. We went 45 minutes yesterday. Uh, you know, we got a lot of guys that are playing a lot of minutes and I'd never heard of load management until the NBA came up with that a couple of years ago. But uh, it seemed like to me, it used to be guys play 40 minutes and still practice all day, but that's certainly not the case now. And, and, and I'd much rather have uh, fresh legs and fresh minds than I would, you know, a lot of reps in practice. So I don't know about the, the the load management during a game. I think we'll play to win whatever we feel like it gives us the best chance. But but during practice, I, I definitely want to keep them off their feet as much as possible. Got time for a couple more. Hey, Bill, will we, uh, will we ever see you in a suit again during a game, or are you kind of digging this casual look during COVID? Yeah, digging may be a little bit of a stretch, Romery, <laughs> but but uh, uh, yeah, I I I, uh, I don't think you will. I, I don't think you will. I, 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 uh, I feel more comfortable, you know, my dry cleaning bill is ridiculously lower than what it normally has been. And, uh, uh, I think that, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good look to be honest with you for coaches. I, I, I do. I, there'll be some coaches do it, uh, without question, but I'm pretty superstitious about certain things it may depend on how we finish the season, because if we don't finish the season, right, I'm sure, how I'm dressed will play a large role in that. So who knows how we'll do it next year. Bill, uh, good, good teams naturally win more close games, but but do you think it also breeds confidence that helps them maybe in future close games? Uh, yes, I do. But I also know when you play a lot of close games, you're, 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 you're messing with fire. I mean, uh, you, you play a close game, a team takes a bad shot that goes in, you take a good shot that doesn't go in and game over. Uh, so it, it doesn't always play percentages right where the team that plays the best down the stretch actually wins. But, but we, we, we've been, you know, knock on wood, we, we've been pretty good so far in, in one or two possession games uh, thus far. And so uh, I do think it gives you confidence. I also think this, uh, I don't think you want to play too many of them. Uh, um, and Billy Tubbs told me a long time ago, he asked me in 2008, how many close games that we play, like, you know, under five points or whatever. And I told him like six or seven. He said, good, you're not tired. And he thought there was something really to not having to go through that middle grind uh, on a consistent basis. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that, but that was something he believed. And, uh, uh, but I, I, I do know this, it would be nice not to have to sweat sometimes. And, and, and certainly, we haven't put ourselves in enough situations where that's the case. Uh, uh, but it is good for us, Dave, no question. Rather play them than not play them and, and have success. But I think over time, I don't think you want to be doing it twice a week. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, guanks. guys. See you. Thanks.